Super Saiyan. You hate to be left hanging. Soon you'll know the rest of the story. Hello, Mr. Fusion here for another trip down memory lane. Now, you may or may not remember, but around this time last year I did a video celebrating my 20th anniversary in the Dragon Ball fandom by making a video showing 10 of my favorite edits from the first two seasons of Dragon Ball Z. Well, now we've reached the 20th anniversary of the premiere of Season 3 on Cartoon Network's Toonami Block, September 13th, 1999, otherwise known as Z-Day. Now, for those of you who weren't in the fandom at the time, you might not understand why this is such a big deal, or understand the kinds of emotions that are elicited by saying Season 3 in regards to Dragon Ball Z. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of history before we get to the big stuff. Alright, in 1995, Funimation produced 13 episodes of Dragon Ball before the following year moving on to Dragon Ball Z. They did two seasons of that, which were syndicated by Saban, with voice work provided by Ocean. Yes, that's right, I feel the need to reiterate this every time I bring this up, but this... It's over 9,000! ...is Funimation's dub. Just because I hire Tim's Rufo-Rama to replace the shingles on my house doesn't mean that my house suddenly belongs to Tim. Likewise, just because Funimation hires Ocean to do the voices doesn't make that product any less Funimation's. So after two years in syndication, Saban dropped out, and since Funimation didn't have the resources to do it on their own, no new Dragon Ball Z aired on television for about a year and a half. The reruns found a new home on Cartoon Network in the fall of 1998, which led me to last year's video. Those did so well that Cartoon Network ordered more episodes. So Funimation moved everything in-house to Texas. That meant no more Ocean for the voices, no more Pioneer for the home video releases, they were going to do everything themselves and Season 3 was going to contain 50 new episodes! That was almost as many as the first two seasons combined! And after such a huge hiatus, so many cycles of going from this to this, over and over and over again, dub audiences could finally watch the end of the Frieza arc. So when these new episodes hit the streets, the verdict was unanimous. We hated them. We hated the music. We hated the inaccurate and punched up dialogue. We hated the amateurish cast of imitators. And even the actors will say nowadays how bad they were then. We predicted this was the end. Dubbed Dragon Ball Z was dead. Clearly, we were wrong. And things have most certainly improved. But if you weren't around at the time, you probably don't even know that. Because if you pick up Season 3 of the Orange Brick DVDs or the Season Blu-rays... And you know what? Don't. Those are terrible releases not worth the plastic they're printed on. The episode selection is not the same, and a lot of it has been redubbed to make it... less bad. But now I'm getting ahead of myself. So despite the... obvious growing pains, this is the last season of the dub I have any real nostalgia for. So that's why I want to share with you the 10 things you need to know about experiencing Season 3 of Dragon Ball Z in 1999. And it has been fun reliving these with my, uh recorded off the TV initial broadcast tapes, because, you know, there is no Rock the Dragon collectible edition for this. So please excuse me, as the majority of my footage will be from 20-year-old VHS tapes recorded in EP mode. So that's enough of an intro, let's get to it. Sleeping Princess in Devil's Castle. This is not technically part of Dragon Ball Z Season 3. However, the second Dragon Ball movie was the first project Funimation attempted with their in-house staff. So, in a way, it served as the testing ground to see if they could actually pull this off. And like Season 3, it's... rough. Although it at least kept the original music. Some of its casting choices would stick around for Season 3 of DBZ. Brad Jackson would return as Oolong, although not in Season 3, oddly enough. Oh, you think you're tough, huh? Well, I could take you out, buddy boy. <laughs> Brother, I'm feeling claustrophobic. Oh, no. Mike McFarlane first voiced Master Roshi here. Does a dog buck? Heck yeah, boy, you're in! And Chris Sabat cut his teeth on Yamcha. I find that especially weird because by the time he came back to voice the character in Season 3, Yamcha went from sounding like this... Did you guys hear that? It sounded like Bulma! To sounding like this. Wow, Vegeta was crying? No kidding, that's whack. I guess Goku's on his own. Man, that bites. Why the terrible surfer accent? 
Other casting choices for this movie would not continue on. Always remember, I'm the one who discovered you. But it was Sleeping Princess, not Dragon Ball Z, that first gathered the group of actors that a lot of you are still listening to today. Two types of tapes. When Funimation, to use a Texas-sounding turn of phrase, took the bull by the horns and moved everything in-house, voice work wasn't the only Dragon Ball Z element to get that treatment. Pioneer had been their home video arm during the first two seasons, and even had a hand in dubs of the first three movies. Which were awesome. Now in the latter case, they made available subtitled and dubbed versions of the films, and the films were released uncut. But even in the DVD releases, the television series was edited and dub only. After all, the first two seasons were edited only. They had 13 and a half episodes worth of material cut out. They were just too different to do that. But the goal with season three was to get things back on track, to get the episodes synced back up, and to release an uncut version for the first time. And those would lead the following summer to bilingual DVDs, making the original show available on home video for the first time in either America or Japan. Regardless of anything else you might say about Season 3, that was a huge step in the right direction. And although the cover art wasn't nearly as cool looking as what Pioneer had put out, for a few dollars more than the Toonami cut, you could buy uncut tapes. Granted, since the show was now being edited for Cartoon Network's cable standards as opposed to Saban's, there was a lot less censoring even on the cut tapes. In fact, it seems like Funimation had to raunch up some of the dialogue to make these uncut tapes seem worth it. <coughs> Man, turkey. <coughs> Man, bite me. That's right. If there's anything that I've learned from this whole ordeal, it's that I am an absolute genius. That's right. If there's anything I've learned from this whole ordeal, it's that I am a freaking genius. <laughs> but whether you got the uncut tapes or the broadcast tapes, there was often an incentive to shell out the money rather than waiting to see them on TV because oftentimes the tapes did come out first. You know, for example, season three began airing in September. The first two tapes, Captain Ginyu Assault and Captain Ginyu Double Cross, were released on tape in May. Even the next two tapes, Frieza the Summoning and Frieza Transformation, were out before the season began airing, as those two marked my introduction to the new cast and music. A friend of mine had picked them up and showed them to all of us, but he didn't get the uncut tapes. Mm. Which brings me to... What episode is this? Now, something that caused some trouble was what I mentioned earlier. The first two seasons had cut out 13 and a half episodes worth of material. And season two ended... somewhere in the middle of episode 67? Those first 53 dubbed episodes often began and ended at totally different spots than their original counterparts. And yet, in Season 3, another half episode would have to be cut in order to get the episode synced up again. Now, for the broadcast version, that meant trimming out small bits over the course of the next four episodes until they were locked at 14 episodes behind the Japanese numbering. But you couldn't exactly call something an uncut tape if you were trimming things for time. So that meant that the uncut version of Captain Ginyu Assault was a totally different beast. Allow me to demonstrate as best I can. Japanese episode 68, at last, a direct confrontation, Captain Ginyu takes the field. The first full episode to be adapted into season 3 begins right as Goku defeats Butta and ends as Vegeta leaves Goku to fend for himself against Ginyu and Jis. English Season 2 ends right as Goku begins to fight Jason Birder. Broadcast Episode 54, Ginyu Assault, opens right where that left off and ends as Ginyu and Jace leave Frieza's ship to confront Goku, quite a bit earlier. But while Uncut Episode 54 starts in the same place as Broadcast 54, because they weren't just going to jump ahead half an episode, they synced things up immediately. It carries all the way through Vegeta's defection. That meant a first episode that was really, really long. It also meant that until the broadcast version finished their trims, there was material that was contained in different episodes, depending on whether you were watching uncut or edited. That's just crazy. Z-Day. Get ready for a power trip. A lot had happened since we last left Toonami. Moltar was out. Tom was in. It's like this every weekday at 5. Dragon Ball Z had become very popular in its year of reruns. 
Earlier in 99, it had even taken over Toonami for a full week with a block called DBZ20XL. Dispensing of Sailor Moon, Reboot, and the Real Adventures of Johnny Quest, the whole week was nothing but DBZ. When Season 3 came to airwaves, they ushered it in with Z-Day. Not a whole week, but still hotly anticipated. Once again, DBZ took over the entire Toonami block for the day, with the first hour containing the last two old episodes, that is the last two episodes of Season 2, and the second hour containing the first two new episodes. It definitely built anticipation. And of course, I had my VCR set to record it. Cartoon Network did a great job taking a premiere and making it into an event. That's blood! If you hadn't picked up the tapes ahead of time and were being introduced to Season 3 through Z-Day, it had to have been very jarring to start the recap of dubbed Episode 54 and see all the characters in the same scenes you had just seen them in, only now with blood all over their faces. Not all blood was kept, like gushing or spurting, but since the first two seasons were largely bloodless, this is one of the first signs that Season 3 was going to be different. While Another Dimension was still set a few more times, Characters were now allowed to die, dead bodies were shown, even Dende was blasted to Kingdom Come without the slightest alteration. Later that season, a flashback showed Goku's death from Season 1 to Piccolo's special beam cannon. The last time we'd seen it, it looked like this. Now, it looked like this. It was a whole new world of gore and death. Another lost episode. So in my last video, I talked about how there'd been a lost episode from Season 1, but there's actually one from Season 3 as well. While Cartoon Network's editing standards were much more lax, that didn't mean that everything was considered cable appropriate. So even after the episodes were synced up to 14 episodes behind the Japanese, there was still more cutting that had to be done. It was already a huge step up in the violence level when Frieza impales Krillin. And while that's all that happens in the manga, the TV series stretches it out to several minutes of torture. And that simply wouldn't fly. But unlike other tiny content edits of Season 3 and beyond, this was far too much material to simply cut and look the other way. So a whole bunch more was cut, such as Frieza torturing Gohan and several irrelevant cutaways. And ultimately, three episodes were combined into two, a la Seasons 1 and 2. From that point on until the end of the series, the English numbering was set at 15 behind the Japanese numbering. But all that content still had to exist in the uncut version. So just like at the beginning of the season, that meant that depending on whether you were watching the uncut version or the broadcast version, certain scenes would appear in different episodes. To help deal with this issue, the uncut tape, and later DVD, listed the second episode of this trio, Gohan Attacks, without a number at all. That meant the broadcast dub had 276 total episodes, while the uncut dub had 276 numbered episodes and one unnumbered episode. But as if that wasn't complicated enough already, the broadcast used the Gohan Attacks title card anyway. It was Piccolo the Super Namek that didn't air on TV. So which one is actually the unnumbered episode? Who knows. Goku handles the next episode previews. Now, if you're an English-speaking fan of classic Dragon Ball, next episode previews are kind of like Bigfoot. You might believe they exist. You might have even seen one in your lifetime. But over the course of the past 20 years, they have all but disappeared, unless you have the Dragon Boxes. See, the problem is, is that aside from Dragon Ball GT and the Dragon Boxes, Toei apparently never provided next episode previews with any audio to Funimation. So while they could be used in the dub, they couldn't be used in the Japanese version. And that became a problem when they started releasing bilingual DVDs. See, while Funimation's practice had been to just sort of marathon mode everything, the DVDs were supposedly intended for us crazy purists who actually wanted to see the complete episodes. So with enough complaining, it was eventually enough to convince them to, slowly but surely, add back in the recaps, matching opening animations, and eye catches. But getting the next episode previews back was just not possible on the Japanese side of things. And since Dragon Ball had the same problem, they didn't even bother dubbing them. And Dragon Ball GT, which initially did have plenty of Bigfoot sightings, lost theirs when the Green Bricks were released, presumably to make things consistent across the board. 
With all those complications, it's easy to forget that next episode previews were a regular part of the dubbed Dragon Ball Z experience. And once the episodes became synced up in Season 3, the recaps and previews could be identical to the originals. Since relatively few people here have seen them, you might not know how they even work. Usually, Goku says a few things about the next episode while other relevant characters chime in with their opinions or lines from the episode, culminating in Gohan putting in the last word at the title card reveal. However, in the first two seasons of the dub, there was no title card, and it was the narrator handling the previews, just like he did with the recap. Season 3 added in the title cards, and then, six episodes in, something surprising happened. Hi, this is Goku! Get ready for the next exciting episode of Dragon Ball Z! Goku started presenting the next episode previews. Well, at least for a little while. Sometimes he'd do it, sometimes he wouldn't. Sure, the dialogue was about as inaccurate as you could get, and no other characters joined in, but it was still a step in the right direction, brought to you by Season 3. So by the time modern Dragon Ball kicked off with Dragon Ball Kai, Funimation was finally handling the next episode previews the way they were supposed to be. Better late than never. But wait, there's more! We were all excited to see the end of the Freeza arc, and once that wrapped up by early November and reruns began again, we figured that was it. But Funimation had promised 50 episodes for Season 3, but only 39 had aired. Well, the following spring, Cartoon Network revealed the remaining episodes, but in a slightly different way. Toonami opened up a new block for Saturday mornings called Rising Sun, and that's where the infamous Garlic Jr. arc premiered. And in some ways, this is where the Season 3 transition became complete. While Toonami almost never showed the openings to their shows, all Season 3 up to that point it continued to use Rock the Dragon for the opening and ending. It wasn't until the Garlic Jr. arc that the new Bruce Falconer theme, which had been used in the show itself all season, finally took its place as the official theme. It's no Chala Head Chala, or Zenkai Power, or even Rock the Dragon. But, you know, it exists. It's certainly better than this thing. Here today, gone tomorrow. Until 2005, the dub maintained its 276 episode configuration, comprised of the first two edited seasons with the Ocean cast, and the following four seasons with Funimation's in-house cast. Because, yes, Dragon Ball Z in America had six seasons, not nine. Once the home video rights reverted from Pioneer to Funimation, they redubbed the first two seasons and began releasing them as part of their Ultimate Uncut Edition line, which they abandoned unfinished two years later in favor of one of the worst home releases of anything in the history of ever. The fact that these pieces of garbage are still in print after 12 years should be taken as a sign that Funimation hates you personally. But that's a subject for another video, which I've already made. But when these abominations hit store shelves, it was the first time all 291 episodes could be purchased. As butchered as they were. Funimation took the opportunity to clean up some of their earlier embarrassing mistakes. Because while the sets claim to have a US broadcast audio track on them, they really don't. Just one of many, many blatant lies about these DVDs. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'll stop, I'll stop, I'll stop, I'll stop. But that's what I mean when I say that you don't really understand Season 3 unless you were there at the time, because things were changed. Some actors re-recorded their lines. If you're going to make a wish, make it a doozy. Let me wish for immortality and we'll win for sure. But I have an idea. Let me wish for immortality and we'll win for sure! Voice filters were bizarrely removed. Time to back up your pathetic taunts, my delusional sub-super saiyan. Because now you have to back up your delusional pathetic taunts, super saiyan. Other characters were recast entirely. We're like two puppies that have been separated from their litter. That guy is gonna pay dearly for this! We're like two puppies that have been separated from their litter. That guy is gonna pay dearly for this! And these vocal changes were consistent across both dub tracks. The new 5.1 track with the original Japanese score, and the supposed broadcast track. 
It was an attempt to help smooth the transition between the 1999 material and the Season 2 redub material they recorded several years later after they become much more experienced. And while I'm totally fine with that in regards to the new 5.1 dub they made, I can't say I agree with them blatantly lying about the broadcast audio track, because, I mean, that's what it says it is. Ah, well, whatever, who cares. SDA. When I did this video's counterpart last year, I talked a lot about one of my favorite Dragon Ball Z fan sites of the era, Dragon Ball Z Uncensored. And I pay tribute to one of its features, Stupid Dialogue Alert, by showcasing some of my favorite over-the-top lines from Seasons 1 and 2. Well, Season 3 arguably had just as many, if not more, examples of ridiculous dialogue, hilariously bad line delivery, and just woefully poor translations. So, let's finish up today with some more lines that are silly, stupid, or just plain wrong. Ah! Ah! Oh, holy cosmos, look at that thing! My gosh, that's one whopper of a lizard! I command you now, hear my howl, to make my wish come true! Don't be afraid of him, men. I'd rather be a free man at my grave than living as his puppet or his slave. Yes, 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 yes! I can win! I feel great! I can do this! I'll bet Frieza doesn't know the password, huh? Huh. <laughs> These balls aren't like the ones on Earth. Here you need to know a password. Oh no, it's Vegeta. Ah, it can't be! Destroy Frieza. He made me what I am. This! It's a mystical magic wand that works with the bell to get you into heaven. Oh, man, it's also a letter opener. Hmm. <laughs> and just 10 cents a minute. That's my way. Hey, I still got it. <laughs> huh? Oh, yeah, I almost forgot. Krillin's in the house. Well, those are the 10 things you need to know to understand dubbed Dragon Ball Z Season 3. And why so many people find it so influential and so infamous. Despite all the bumps along the road, they really did serve as a turning point for Funimation's handling of Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball GT, the whole franchise, really. So hope you found this video enjoyable. If this is your first time here, maybe you'd like to check out my ongoing Dragon Ball review and analysis series, Dragon Ball Dissection. And if you would be so kind, check out my Patreon page. I am so overwhelmed by your generosity so far. This is only the first video I've put out since I launched the page, really. And you guys have just blown me away. We are so close to making this channel sustainable. So thanks everybody for watching. Have a wonderful day. And I can't wait to see you again next time. Bye!